you get done with the trail and you look at each other and go, can you believe we just did that? You know, so that's the thing I think I, I love the most about the riding is, is uh, you, you, you know, I'm getting older, but you still feel like a, a little kid when, when you have that kind of joy. So. My name's Mark, and these guys all call me Sarge. I'm retired from the military. Um, I was in the Army for about 23 years. And, and, uh, so that has a connection to the motorcycling because I started riding motorcycles when I was a, a, a small child. And I was, I was the youngest child of, of uh, three older brothers who all had motorcycles when I was too young to have one. And I, they would, we would go to this place uh, in, in uh, they called uh, Hollister Hills. It's a motorcycle uh, off-road park. And we had a trailer, and I would always have to stay by the trailer all the time while my brothers would ride, you know, they would either be on the track or they'd disappear for hours. And uh, I remember just couldn't wait to get on the bike. And then finally, I was old enough, and, and uh, I got a hand-me-down enduro uh, I think it was a little Honda uh, Enduro 175 from the 70s. Uh, and, uh, it was short enough for me to get on, and, and that was my first time really enjoying the motorcycle. I, I know I wanted to do it long before I ever got the chance. So uh, my name is Growler, aka uh, Michael French, and uh, I started riding motorcycles uh, in high school uh, up in New Jersey and mostly Enduros at that time. And it was, uh, uh, since we were underage, it was illegal, so we had to go into trails and uh, try to uh, keep, keep conspicuous uh, and uh, away from the law. And, uh, and then I took a break when I was in college and afterwards, and then started back on Suzuki uh, Enduro at that time. And then about 15 years ago, discovered BMW motorcycles and got my first one uh, used R1100R that uh, some older guy decided uh, he didn't want to ride anymore, so he sold it to me and I've been riding BMWs ever since. My name is Leopoldo. Um, here in the Maggie Mob, they call me Samba. Um, I ride a um, 800 GS from 2012. I got from one of the, our friends here in the in the, um, in the gang. Uh, it's a great bike. I'm in love with the BMW, and and I kind of dropped into the BMW um, motorcycles uh, out of nowhere. Um, my first bike was in uh, I got it in Miami when I moved to USA. It was a Yamaha Virago, um, small engine, 250. Uh, I had a, a lot of fun. I was able to learn a lot of like little maintenances with the with the bike. I think that's very important when you when you're riding to know your bike, to, to, to know to do a little like little things, change the oil, change the brakes, um, things like that. Change the battery. It's very important. You save some money, and if you get strain on the side of the road, you can always uh, um, try to, to to save yourself. My name is David Clement. I go by BB. Uh, Retired probation parole officer. The BB stands for bell boxer, and that's what I do now in my retired days. Okay. Uh, my first motorcycle was a 90 Suzuki Dual Trail, and I got that the year I graduated high school. And drove it around quite a while. I had a lot of fun on that bike. Did a lot of trail riding with it. And uh, after college, I probably about uh, 25 years old, maybe 30. I bought a 450 Honda, 
and rode it for several years. But the old Honda is not as comfortable as the newer bikes. Uh, I got into BMWs back in 1990. <coughs> I bought an R, R80 RT, which I still have. And uh, that's when I got into BMWs. And uh, they're just a much more comfortable bike. Uh, we do a lot of sports touring, and uh, they're, they're built for that. Plane. My first real bike was at 16 years old. I had a really good job. I was a machinist, and I saved up the money, and I went down and bought a brand new 1983 GPZ 550. And paid cash for it at 16. It's pretty dangerous, right? Uh, I grew up in California, and some of the roads that, uh, there uh, are some of the most famous ones. I, I was riding uh, Highway 9 and Skyline Boulevard. Uh, Highway 9 goes from Los Gatos all the way over the uh, Santa Cruz Mountains, across the Skyline Boulevard, which is also another famous road, and all the way down to uh, the Santa Cruz area, where the Santa Cruz Beach is. So I grew up on, you know, riding some pretty amazing roads on that GPZ, and then I, I joined the Army, and uh, had my bike in uh, like winter storage and I let a guy borrow it for a day and he crashed it and I never had that bike again so I would being in the army for so long I I just didn't ever take the time to go get another bike for many years and then at one point I said you know I, I need to get back into this riding so I've, I've got a KLR 650, which is you know, it's a low-end adventure bike, but a lot of people have them, and I rode that for years. But I was only doing a little bit of riding, and then Growler invited me to a, uh, a BMW rally, and I said, well, I, I really can't go with you guys. So I don't have a BMW. So, nope, you'll, you'll have a good time. Just just come up. And, uh, where, where was that place? That was in Link, Johnson, City. Johnson City, Tennessee. And it was about 10,000 people. It was amazing. I had so much fun. First time I saw one of, those, right. one of these chairs. And uh, and we've been riding together ever since. And then through that 250 bike, I met a, a good friend of mine, Jim Dotton. And uh, he had a BMW. And I always look after that good bike. It was a perfect bike for, for a cross country. He did a few cross-country trips with it and it was always um, motivating me for, for maybe someday getting a BMW. Um, we, he showed me a little bit of a Florida riding and uh, unfortunately after um, a couple, um, couple years that we know each other, he ended up passing away. And, um, and then he surprised me, he, he, he left me uh, his motorcycle to me, so that was my first BMW. I, was a 1995 um, 1100 GS and uh, nicknamed Papa Bear. <laughs> um, and, and that was the first time I, I, uh, I, I rode a BMW. And they were heavy, completely different uh, way of riding from the Yamaha 250. But uh, they're so comfortable and, and so made for the road that you adapted so fast. I, I, I did adapt it so fast, and, and I believe other people can adapt it uh, very fast as well. Um, I then um, decided to move away from, from Florida and I went to, to a few other cities and one day I rode to, to Maggie Valley in North Carolina um, to visit a friend of mine that I met through Jim too, Growler, also part of the Maggie Mob. And um, when I get there I met all, all his friends on the motorcycle and, and, and this crazy thing happened to me. I, I met the first owner of the bike that was owned by Jim first and then given to me I met the first owner of it and and that uh, hit me pretty strong and I decided that uh, that place was my new home and uh, then me and uh, Rakia we, we moved to North Carolina and so far that has been the best decision I ever made especially for my motorcycle uh, activity. I'm currently riding. <coughs> K1600 K LT, which is a six cylinder motorcycle. And it will, it will get down the road, does everything good, real good. Uh, best riding 
places, uh, pylons, that area is real good on 64. Uh, usually a lot of traffic through the week's better. Uh, and my current bike right now, well actually I have four, <laughs> and the, uh, the one I tour with is a R1250 GSA. Uh, 2019, but I also have a bike to, to go off-road, an 800 GS, and then uh, uh, a 1000XR, which is uh, super fast, so that's good for twisties around here. And then the uh, uh, I also have a, a 1200 GS uh, that is down back in Miami, but most of my riding is up in western North Carolina, around all the good roads up here where people travel across the country to uh, to sample these roads. Well, my, my current bike right now, I uh, I finally knuckled down and bought a, a BMW, and it's a R1200 GS Adventure 2016. I got it used, and it's just a beautiful thing. Uh, I've been getting used to riding a bigger, heavier bike, but it's 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 fun. Uh, I I got a disease. I picked up last year when we all went to uh, mm -hmm. Europe and we all met up in Munich and rented different BMW bikes and I rented a, a, a brand new 1250 GS and we rode through Switzerland and Italy and Austria and for a, 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 what about two weeks stayed at Airbnbs and we just had the most fun and the best riding and uh, b best trip I've ever had. And uh, when I got back, I had I, fi I realized I picked up this disease. I had to get this bike, <laughs> so I, I knuckled down and went and picked it up. And uh, rode all winter this year. Got got heated gear, and we put about almost 6,000 miles on the bike in in the cold, and uh, it, and it was still fun. So looking forward to riding this year. We got some trips canceled because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, we're, we're going to get some stuff going on, I think, out to Colorado, right? So. Do a lot of riding uh, around Greenville, Tennessee, too. That's, that's some good riding also. It's uh, hard to mention our European trip last year, last summer. That was a great trip. We all, we all rented, rented different BMW bikes. Had a great time for two weeks. Uh, Germany, Switzerland, northern Italy, and Austria. And really had a great time. Uh, my wife also rides. Uh, she has a American Triumph. It's kind of a cruiser bike, and that's the other bike we have in place for the garage. And, uh, and I love to tour on the motorcycle, go camping, sort of what we're doing here, although uh, longer touring uh, with some of my buds out into the west coast and into Canada and all the bouts around there. Probably my favorite road out in that way is Beartooth Highway, which uh, connects Red Lodge, Montana with some small town up in Wyoming and into Yellowstone, and that's a great road. Oftentimes, even in the summer, there's snow all around it. And uh, probably in North Carolina, they, my favorite road around here. There's so many in western North Carolina, but probably my favorite is uh, Highway 209, which uh, goes from Lake Jonaluska up to Hot Springs. And that one is, is uh, really neat. Uh, the nickname for that is the Rattler. Uh, less traveled than, uh, than the Dragon, so it's, uh, it's pretty close to where I live. One of the one of the things when you, you asked uh, earlier about, you know, what, what are some roads, and I know you said 209. So that was the first time I really rode with a group. And we were riding, we were getting after it and having a blast, and, and it just sold me on coming and doing this type of thing, and, and you know, putting a trip together and camping, and, and planning out the routes, and just going from place to place. It's the most most fun you can have. I don't know, we've been riding together for, what, about 10, 12 years now? Longer than that. Longer than that. And uh, if at all possible, when riding, it's good to take camping gear and find a place to camp, uh, primitive or not, and, 
and then uh, pack up and figure out where the next destination is. So that's what I love about riding. So you said you switched to BMWs. What was so special about BMWs? And so I've always uh, enjoyed. I had a, a BMW car at that time. Uh, it was uh, like a uh, forget the model, but I it, it was great workmanship. Uh, it was fun to ride that car. And so when I saw this for sale at a at a motorcycle shop, I was actually looking for a different brand. And I said, eh, let me give this a try. And it it was. Uh, I think it was a 1999, maybe maybe it was uh, older than that, but got a good deal on it and never looked back. The only thing I've owned since then is uh, BMWs. I've uh, stayed, stayed with that brand. So one of the things that I liked about the KLR is it's so small and light. It has no power and it doesn't do anything really well, but but it has, it's really light. And uh, we did a, a, a trip to Boone and a trip to what was it, Willville uh, in Virginia. And both those trips we did extensive on and off road. So switching from the street and we're dragging a knee and hanging corners and then we're on horrible, you know, single track and crossing creeks and falling over in the in the ruts. And that's probably for me the most fun is when you can do both of those things on the same day, back and forth. Um, I remember one time in in uh, when we were when we were at the Boone Rally, and Growler and I we got to the stop sign, and he he lifted me and I lifted him and <laughs> screaming high five and, and and that's that's just the most fun you can have when when uh, you, know, you get done with the trail and you look at each other and go can you believe we just did that? You know, so that's the thing I think I, I love the most about the riding is. is uh, you know, I'm getting older, but you still feel like a, a little kid when, when you have that kind of joy. So. Uh, there's plenty of good rides. I'm, I'm fairly new with the rides. I don't know the names yet and everything, but I know 276 where you cross Pisgah. That's a great ride, and, and, and it makes me go from my home to the, to the, to the west part of, um, of Haywood County, where most of my, my friends are. So definitely a great ride to ride. Another great thing about motorcycles, I think, are, are the rallies. Um, you, you learn a lot when you go over there and you meet a lot of people everywhere um, of the United States. And that, that's really important when you're with a motorcycle because um, when you're riding and you need a shelter or something happens, if you know people or if you know communities, uh, the BMW community, it's super helpful and friendly. And they have uh, a program that um, you can, like, if you're in an area, you can just call and they will come help you out. And that's amazing. You don't see that very often. Uh, I think that's one of the, the best parts of uh, riding a BMW is the community that you, that you dive into it. Um, but, uh, yeah, some of the rallies that uh, me and my wife we went was the, the Burksville Rally, European Rally uh, in K Kentucky. And then also some um, the high pass boogie in the West Virginia. Um, great ride by the Blue Ridge Parkway. Another, another great ride too. Um, and another rally was um, high pass boogie. Did I say that? Right? Yeah, high pass boogie and uh, no, and the 250 chaser. That's just in my backyard, but it's an off-road um, ride which uh, with my F800 have no problem, um, but is I have to say that it's quite uh, tricky to put a, uh, a BMW on an off-road sometimes, you know, it hurts, uh, it hurts sometimes, but uh, it's totally worth it, again, it's made for it, so be brave and put your bike to, to ride. So just from the organization standpoint, like, was it hard to put together that European trip? Because it's might have done most of it, truthfully. <laughs> Sorry to let us most of the time. <laughs> so, Mike, you know, Mike does a lot of traveling. He's a professor. We didn't really have it planned out uh, other than the first, what, couple of days, three, four days, mm -hmm. and then he, he found a really good Airbnb, and then we just went Airbnb, and he just kept getting on the phone at break time, and, and, and oh, I found another place. Hey, well, let's go. <laughs> yeah, and, and he found the most amazing places. Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't really have an itinerary. No. And then we just figure out, okay, now we're here. 
let's ride these roads today and yeah, it was it was very spontaneous a little a little jumpy when you went on that same ride four years later wouldn't you <laughs> had to redo it yeah <laughs> i said bb you better you better keep your uh intercom open mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to talk through yeah. this <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna be able to make it i might I, be I, my I, knees might be knocking yeah <laughs> well, i don't know whether yeah, it's superstition so talk me through it yeah <laughs> i don't want any superstition off the bike i mainly rode he wouldn't ride because that's the one he had rented four years earlier and got side so. I didn't. i didn't ride it once uh, uh, we did trade bikes the whole time. We, we each, even though we rented each a different bike, we we all switched up bikes. Although my, uh, uh, Growler never did ride that same that same bike out of stu superstition. <laughs> I never did wind up back in the hospital. So no, we, it, was a good, it was a good call. It was a good, good, good call. call. There you go. Yeah. Good call. But uh, uh, motorcycle riding is an addiction, and. Uh, you know, it's a legal addiction. And I, I used to kid some of my guys, I said, you know, buying a motorcycle is a whole lot cheaper than having a mistress. So. <laughs> a whole lot safer. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> People are intimidated about starting riding motorcycles, but if you just do it in a smart way, you know, the, you could tell from all the stuff we have, we're into safety gear and in doing all the right things when it comes to safety. But, you know, I'm not going to lie, we ride fast sometimes. And, you know, but if we're riding with someone who's new, we'll back it down. And, 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 and we were talking about this last night. You ride your ride. You ride the way is safe for you. You don't ever have to keep up with the group. We we always have a, a deal where, you know, we get, we're on a, a you know, a road somewhere and we're, we're riding. It doesn't matter how, if you stay with the group. If we get to a place where we're turning and you're not there, we're all waiting for you. And then, okay, we're going right or left, let's go. And, and all along the next thing. So it's it's uh, it's an important thing for us not to really expect anybody to keep up with anything like that. <laughs> Say a few words about how you got the nickname Samba and, and Rakia. <laughs> well, um, so yeah, I'm, they named me Samba. Um, this was my, I got this nickname in Kirksville, Kentucky, after a wild night um, <laughs> no. with uh, some moonshine and then all the good stuff that the the mountains of uh, of uh, the eastern United States have. Um, and uh, and my wife got the name of Rakia um, because of this amazing liquor. They have in their country we call it a key. Uh, and we brought some with us and when we showed the culture to the to, to our friends and they they fell in love with the with the with the drink um, yeah and all of us have a uh, nicknames and uh, if you are part of our team someday you're gonna have a nickname too <laughs> yeah. the real Difficulty with bikes for new people is, yeah, is really so the low speed handling. But they you know, they do that every dri time. driving around in here, here and that, like trying to make a turn in the gravel, uh, you know, little bumps and things. Uh, that's the problem that most people have when they first start. It's like you can easily drop it and well, stuff like once that. You, I mean, these are pretty heavy. Once you get it in the wrong position, it's going to fall over. You're not going to stop it. You know, if you get it over too far, you know, and that's not very far. Yeah. You know, um, uh, the tire slips in the rut, the, and then your momentum goes this way. You're just gonna get off the bike. You know, it's gonna fall over. You know, um, that's that's kind of the, the trade-off for this type of the dual sport riding when you go and start messing around off-road. Yeah. So with these bigger ones, you have to be super careful. You know, the lighter ones are easier. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the great thing about the F800 is that it uh, characterizes a dual sport. So depending which tires you have, depending like which equipment you add, add more weight, add less weight, uh, that will characterize your bike more to off-road. Uh, right now I have some um, tires 40, 60 on my bike, so that allows me to take some trails um, that I was not expecting to be, to be on the road or that helps me with stability in gravel, crossing creeks and etc. Um, 
but I definitely could maybe adjust it and make it more to the road as well. So that's the great thing about dual sport. Uh, you can always uh, um, modify the way you want to go more off-road or more on the road. Hold on, we gotta, we gotta move that rock right there because you tripped on it like every time you went over to that cooler. <laughs> really? Remember when, right before we went to bed, you, you kind of crashed into your chair? Yeah. You missed it a little bit and you, oh, yeah. you, you sat on this instead of Oh the, yeah, okay. Yeah. Roses? Yeah, really? it's really good. Yeah, because that's the point. It smells like, like roses. It smells like you brush your teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it feel like you have metro mouthwash? <laughs> yeah. I was about to like say. Yeah. You just Pretty don't, much. You don't yeah. spit it, you know. <laughs>